Hey everyone, Nate the Nerdark here from Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. Today we're going to be talking about uh, Fast and Dirty Monster creation. And with me I have... Dave. I'm Ted. And before we get into it, I want to say, uh, remember to sign up for the newsletter. If you haven't, you can click on the link below. And it's going to have nerdy stuff in it, uh, GM tips, player tips, and, and also... And you can learn how to game with Nerdarchy. Exactly. Yay! And... Uh, with that, are we going to talk about the specific monster first, or are we going to talk about what we're going to Well, okay, changing? so what, what we're going to talk about, I guess, well, let's do this. I ran a game uh, Thanksgiving Eve. D&D in Space. Yeah, D&D &D in Space. Our new, traditional, uh, our new tradition is to run the D&D &D in Space game before Thanksgiving. And why some people are partying and getting drunk, we're fighting monsters. <laughs> in space. In space, saving the universe. So very, very uh, Planet Express style. Um, <laughs> so my idea was like th th this is a higher level party I was so I wanted to use a dragon I wanted to start st start things off in a pitched battle so they you know so uh, we had a battle between uh, space orcs and uh, which were pirates and the ship the ships were tangled and then out of nowhere drops you know this dragon that I just kind of like randomly described and uh, you know, and then it just starts raking the ships with its breath weapon, which is a line of pure, basically radiation. Uh, I even did the thing where all the spines along its back, uh, back ridge, uh, light up. Oh, Godzilla style! Godzilla, Godzilla style. style, yeah, man. <laughs> right. uh, when it when it would do when it would do its uh, breath weapon, and when when it would hit, um, when it would hit somebody with it, you would see the skeleton outline like the X-ray. <laughs> You know, and if they died, everything just melted away into dust. Um, so, there is no Star Dragon in D&D, by the way, as of right now, 5th edition. But... Or a Space <laughs> Dragon. So, like, I was going to go, yeah, I could have went either way. Space Dragon, Star Dragon, went with Star Dragon. But, there's a bunch of other dragons. Uh, so, I found the CR that was close enough to the XP budget that I thought would work. I was, thought I'd have six players or five, but it was, turned out to be five. Yeah, I didn't get to see the actual combat, which is why I was surprised when you told me it lit up like Godzilla. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and so, I was like, well, which dragon re uh, hits my CR? You know, I want it to be an adult dragon. And, uh, you know, initially, I knew the type of dragon I wanted to use. I wasn't sure if the CRs would mix up. I knew I was going to use the alternate for spell casting. Right. Um, I also added two components that actually, you know, helped a little bit in the battle was, uh, you know, that the pirates actually allied with the crew because they didn't want to get killed by the dragon. So, you know, I had each but they ship... did turn on us as soon as the battle was over. Yeah. So I had each ship, you know, basically act as their own unit and, and have a chance to attack the, um, attack the dragon. And, and like, I let the players... Each each control one of those units, and it was like you know I, I did this like uh, on the fly ruling where it was a uh, proficiency modifier plus the player's uh, charisma, mod. charisma modifier, you know, for their ability to to use them. So naturally, the paladin and the, and the warlock took control. Yes. So so what I did is I ended up going with the adult gold dragon, which and is uh, page one fourteen of your trusty monster manual. And look, the only things I changed was the description, mm -hmm. and I got rid of its uh, its resistance to fire, and replaced the resistance to necrotic and radiant damage. Right. And I made its breath we weapon instead of being a cone, I made it a line. And it was radiant damage. And I did radiant damage instead of fire. Now, you you used for for the the spell casting, you used essentially warlock level. Uh, power. So you basically scaled up all its spells to its highest level. Yeah, because see the thing about dragons, if you use the variant spell casting, it, the, the, they can have the one. They can use a spell once a day, um, and they can have a number of spells equal to their charisma modifier. And the maximum spell level they can use is a third of their CR. Okay, so very similar to Warlock setup where you get a certain number of spells. Right. Yes, but so but it does so but it doesn't say like if if that's a CR six or a uh, level six, it doesn't say you can't just take all six level spells. So in my mind, I'm like, well, why not? You know, if I want magic missile, why not take it as a six level magic missile? Right. So mm -hmm. yeah, I totally did the Warlock thing and been like, yeah, I just and, beef it. you know we we definitely. You know, we, we were a party of uh, 14th level characters, and we were down our luckiest half-man alive. Uh, so it was definitely a challenging encounter. Um, but you know, as Dave says, we did have allies 
Um, it also did not help that uh, its resistances were set against the majority of what the party were, was able to do. Well, two of you. Well, no, no, three, three of you. Yeah. But in my defense, two of those characters chose to change their characters before mm. before the game. So, yeah. like, one of them changed to Warlock, which is going to be a lot of necrotic damage. The other one changed his, you know, changed his patron. his patron to one that would be either necrotic or radiant. Well, <laughs> Ryan Ryan couldn't, you know, effectively smite. Yeah. And uh, your son's character threw out a lot of radiant oh, damage yeah, with his yeah, laser yeah. beams. Yeah, that's so true. So there was launched. literally four four out of the out of the five players at the table had less effective abilities. Against this particular character. Now, um, I didn't actually choose it that way. I just felt like radiant was the closest thing to radiation. Yeah, and yeah. and I'm not I'm not saying that it yeah. was you know whatever. I'd say like a combination of radiant and necrotic. Yeah, it was definitely going to be one yeah. or the other. So, you know, it, it was just it was just an in interesting encounter. Um, the fact that it was shooting radiation magic, and I resist radiation. Or you know, radiant energies. I wasn't you know all that uh, all that bad off, um, but other people definitely. But had some problems. of those orcs, you saw their skeletons and they'd been dusted. <laughs> it was well, and you know, and Mark's character ten hit points at the end of the fight. Yeah, and everyone took some damage. Yes, yeah, you know, to some extent or another. I never did get to cast my disintegrate spell, which um. you know, depending on what Ted's character did, it may have destroyed everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have absorbed it. I, I would have taken it and possibly died. <laughs> I wouldn't. Have t I wouldn't have absorbed it and possibly killed everybody. I would have taken it and died myself. <laughs> yeah, but you know, but you know, that's just an example. Fast and dirty monsters. That's what we do. We show you how to just take something out of the book. A couple tweaks, you have a brand new monster. V visual visually means nothing in in tabletop RPGs because you can describe it however you want. Take a stat block. Make some tweaks, and you've got a whole brand. Oh, and the other thing I do, I did is I pumped up its size, because I, I in fifth edition, the one thing they did do that I don't I don't really care for that much. It seems like they shrunk everything. Mm. It's like the cute and cuddly version of previous editions. Well, colossal doesn't exist anymore. So no, like you know, a a, a dragon is a, an an adult dragon is huge, huge, which is only a fifteen by fifteen square, and um, you know, I like my dragons to be kind of sprawling and big and kind of like Godzilla like so you had you had it have an 80 foot wingspan and a 100 foot long like from snout to tail action yeah yeah like you know you wanted to feel like a dragon you yeah know? I, I was definitely uh, you know a little little terrified of it when he described it as a 100 foot long and I'm like well there are a lot of us we'll see what happens just <laughs> jump on it start biting <laughs> but yeah this series is all about you know you guys just showing you how to make something your own and and not worrying about so much you know whether there's a monster for it or not you guys you know, as you see like I did like I took a couple notes that was it there's hardly yeah. hardly anything I had to do to make that uh, work and different and for my players to go I don't actually know what that is so yeah. it was li literally name you know adult gold dragon change name to star dragon change you know change description and size the the resistances you took away fire and added necrotic and uh, radiant and then the the breath weapon left all the dice the same you changed it from a cone of fire to a line of radiant done call it a day done and done yep so what do you guys think of the star dragon do you want to use it in, in your game put your uh, thoughts and, and feelings in the comments below while you're at it like share even subscribe you can check out the articles over at nerdarchy.com while you're there check out nerdarchy the store get cool swag so until next time stay, stay nerdy, nerdy.